Hello and welcome to the Humbrol YouTube channel. In this video we're going to show you how to use Humbrol weathering powders to achieve heavy rusting and paint chipping effects and also how to combine the weathering powders with Humbrol clear to create a faded look with some realistic fuel staining. To begin with we're going to create a thinned down varnish mixture using 50-50 Humbrol matte coat and Humbrol enamel thinners. This will then be painted onto the surface of the model and will act as the fixer for the weathering powders. Into this mixture, iron oxide, rust and dark earth coloured weathering powders are dabbed with a large brush. Because the varnish is still wet, the weathering powders will blend together on the surface and the tone and colours will merge together to form a very realistic rusted finish. Try to avoid using too much of the same colour or the effect will be too uniform. This rust effect is applied all over the model, but if there are any areas you want to remain clear, a brush loaded with enamel thinners can be used to wash away the mixture. With the weathering powders dry, a light grey was mixed up from Humbrol Acrylics, which is then going to be thinned with Humbrol Decalfix. This will allow us to apply the paint over the top of the weathering powders and then remove it again to form the chip paint effect. First the paint needs to be thinned with Humbrol Decalfix. This is done a little at a time until the consistency of the paint is just right that two layers would completely cover the weathering powders underneath but the layers are thin enough to be removed easily using water and enamel thinners. All that remains to do now is to simply paint the hopper with the diluted paint and allow it to dry before we move on to the next step. Don't worry too much about an even coverage of the paint. If you're going for an extreme rusted effect like this, there will be all kinds of oxidisation and paint fading going on and it will just add more visual interest. The next step is to wet the paint and decal fix mixture with some ordinary tap water. Allow this to soak in for a few minutes and the decal fix will become reactivated and it will weaken the hold of the paint over the top of the weathering powders. This means that the paint can be scratched and chipped away just like the real thing to reveal the colours underneath. With the layer of rusty weathering powders exposed we can now add some Humbrol enamel thinners. This will bring those powders back to life and allow the rusted effect to seep through over the top of the paint layer. You can see that the rust is already bleeding through as more enamel thinners is added, the effect grows greater in its volume until the rust starts to show through almost completely. Once you're happy with the amount of rust effect you've brought through from underneath the paint, simply switch back to the tap water and dilute everything back down to keep it all under control. Let's take another look up close at how the enamel thinners is affecting the paint layer. Because it was thinned with Decalfix, the paint will start to chip away, particularly in the areas that were scratched. This will expose the rusty weathering powders underneath, which then become reactivated by the thinners and start to seep through the paint just like real rust would. This effect is completely at your control because you're the one removing the paint. When you're happy with the finish, simply stop doing it and dilute the thinners with water. If you're not happy, add more thinners until more paint comes away. It's as simple as that. And this is the finished effect. The paint is chipped away, the rust is showing through, and there's loads of different colours and tones going on that give it a really deep and realistic finish. Time for something a little bit different now, and we're going to show you how Humbra weathering powders can be used to achieve a couple of different effects other than using them for dirt and grime. This tanker is going to receive a coat of weathering powders to give the paint a faded and oxidised look and is then going to be mixed with Humbrol Clear to give some fuel staining effects. These should add a splash of interest to any vehicle which carries a liquid cargo but first we're going to need to flat that surface off in preparation for the weathering powders with a coat of Humbrol Matte Acrylic Spray Varnish to give us a nice surface to work on. With the varnish applied, it's time to mix up the grey shade to oxidise and fade that paint out. Here we're using some of the white weathering powder, 
and then we're grinding it together with the smoke shade to form a light grey. With the desired shade of grey mixed up from the weathering powders, it's now simply a case of using a large brush to grind them into the surface of the model. Don't worry too much about the neatness of the application as we are going to manipulate the weathering powders with a damp brush later on, but try to make sure that you've covered the entire surface and you don't leave any areas untouched. By keeping some of the weathering powders separate on the palette, you can add more of the white or smoke shades in different areas to vary the tone. This will give a more interesting finish and prevent it from looking too uniform. With the weathering powders applied, using some ordinary tap water and a much smaller brush, we can go back in now and manipulate those powders to give them a more realistic appearance. Using short, sharp vertical strokes of the brush, start introducing some streaking. This will give the effect of rain marks on the side of the tanker. It's a simple technique to master, just try to ensure that your lines are actually vertical and don't go off at an angle, as this will spoil the effect. This process is very quick and shouldn't take more than a few minutes to do the entire model. Raised details can be picked out with their own individual streaks, as these are the areas where rainwater would naturally accumulate. If there are any areas where the weathering powder buildup is too heavy or there are any fingerprints you want to remove, take a large brush dampened with ordinary tap water and use vertical strokes to streak those weathering powders out of the way. By keeping the brush strokes vertical, everything will tie together nicely and any unsightly areas can be removed and it will all still look natural. It's time to add a little bit of track dust and dirt now using the dark earth shade and we'll apply this to the running gear and to the underside of the tanker just to grime everything up a little bit and give it some conventional weathering. The matte finish we applied earlier will facilitate the application of the weathering powders so it's simply a case of grinding it into the surface and then if required manipulating it with the damp brush again later on. On the upper surfaces of the tanker, those raised details we mentioned earlier are a good place to add some different tones of weathering powder to add more depth to the finish. Here the dark earth is being applied in selected locations and you can see straight away just how much it improves the overall look of the model. It's time to add the finishing touch now which is the spilt fuel and we're taking some Humbrol Clear and adding into it some of the smoke shade weathering powder. Just a touch of dark earth is added to give it a tint of brown as well and then additional clear is added to the mixture to thin it down until it's very translucent. This mixture is then painted straight on top of the weathering powders into which it will soak and give a nice feathered edge. Simply paint different layers of the weathering powder and Humbrol clear mixture onto the surface and allow them to soak into the weathering powders. Because we're painting over powder, the Humbrol Clear may lose some of its glossy finish, so when the streaks dry, add plain clear over the top to build that shine back up. The end result will be a varied and interesting effect that looks like spilt fuel pouring down the sides of your model. The same effect can be applied to all sorts of different models, and it's a really quick and easy way to add something a little bit special. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.